It's getting warmer on the homestead. The birds and wildlife are more active, and so am I. I've been busy in the garden, but also preparing for bees. Last year in March, I took a beginner's beekeeping course through my local beekeeping association. This spring, I wanted to begin my beekeeping journey, so I ordered bees and all of the supplies through my local association. I was scheduled to pick up my bees and supplies on April 14th, but then I came across more information from Dr. Leo Sharashkin about natural beekeeping that really gave me an entirely new outlook on the process. I am drawn to more of a natural way of doing things, so it's no surprise I was hooked. I canceled my order for packaged bees, which I later discovered are usually from southern states, such as Florida, Georgia, or California, and have a harder time acclimating to the northern climates and harsh winters that we get. Plus, they are oftentimes mass-produced under highly unnatural conditions. Instead, I decided to go all natural. Honeybees are wild creatures in a super-organism form. They're not pets, and they can't be trained to behave in a certain way. They are intelligent on their own and will do as they choose each and every time. So in natural beekeeping, you learn how to work with the bees, putting their needs first and honey harvest second. You try to keep them in their most natural state as much as possible, undisturbed. The more hands-on you are when caring for bees, the superorganism is no longer completely wild or in its natural state. They become more and more dependent on you for their survival. Nice and gentle. I purchased a swarm trap kit from Dr. Leo on his website, horizontalhive.com. He provided everything as well as instructions on how to catch a local swarm. Catching a local swarm ensures that you're getting bees with genetics that match your local climate and weather conditions. And when I say catch or trap, there is no harm done to the bees. It's simply helping the local bees find a new home on their terms. Either they choose to live there or they don't. The swarm box was interesting to set up and definitely required the help of my husband. So this is lemongrass swarm lure. Um, so it's lemongrass oil and it's supposed to help attract the bees uh, into the swarm, the swarm kit.
there were already bees. There were already bees that came circling around uh, to check it out. I think that they smelled the lemongrass and uh, the propolis that was on my fingers from trying to rub that into the, the box. So that's a good sign. They're already curious. Look at, there's one. Hi, B. And then you wait and hope that the bees decide to claim this as their new home. If they do, I'll then transfer them into their permanent hive, one that's big enough for them to grow into. I ordered this one from Horizontal Hive. I decided to go with a Horizontal Hive because they're less invasive for bees and mimic their natural habitat. You can access all the frames at once, and they're easier to inspect with less disruption to the bees. As the temperature continues to warm up, I already started to see the white butterflies flying around. These are the butterflies that lay eggs that produce cabbage worms, which is what devoured most of my kale, 
collards, and other brassicas last year. I wanted to be prepared this year, so I planted most of my brassicas in the hoop houses I built. I covered these with insect netting and will leave this on most of the season to prevent these pests from damaging my crop. I also started to make the same JMS solution that I did last year, one of the Jadam Korean natural farming methods. The JMS solution is fantastic at keeping many plant diseases and insects at bay and feeds the plants with minerals and nutrients. I wanted to begin that process earlier this year, as soon as I started to see new growth in the garden. You can watch my past video on how I made this if you're interested in exploring organic homemade solutions for your garden. There are literally only a handful of ingredients in this, most of which you probably already have around your home. This year, I also wanted to do a better job at protecting my soil, so I started to plant ground cover, such as vetch and clover, and used freshly cut grass clippings to cover my garden beds. The moon is in its light phase, and when the ruling planet of Gemini was in force, I knew it was a good time to plant beans. I recently received a gift of beans from a fan of the channel that his family grows every year. They are said to be prolific, so I cannot wait to see them grow this year. Quitar. 
sí, señor. Y si fue él, van a ser. Yo los vuelvo a matar. I've been getting outside when I can to collect some of the plants that are growing wild outside my front doorstep. Dandelions and wild African violets. Both are edible and medicinal, loaded with vitamins and nutrients. I'll be using the dandelion roots to keep my liver well cleansed, the leaves to keep my kidneys healthy, and the flowers for the many vitamins they have to offer. It's amazing how intelligent nature is. It knows what our bodies need and when. Dandelion grows in the spring when our bodies need cleansing after a long winter of stagnation and the heavy foods that kept our bodies warm. The intelligence of nature is all around us. We just need to open our eyes and hearts to it. Mother Earth wants us to be well. That's why I got back into the kitchen to play around with some herbs. I created a new medicinal tea blend called Cloud Nine that I'm really excited about. This tea is like nature's energy drink, and not only does it give you a giant boost of energy, but it also gives you focus and reduces depression. It's great for those who have a hard time focusing, have ADHD, or suffer with depression. In fact, one of the herbs, rhodiola, is an herb that is notorious for increasing mental performance and is what many people take during winter when there is less sun so that they are not as emotionally affected by the gloominess of those dark, cold days. It's definitely a pick-me-up kind of tea. You can check it out on my website at thenakedgardener.us. Your other favorites are still there too, such as Beam Me Up, the tea blend especially for men to help increase libido and balance hormones such as testosterone. Some of the herbs in that one are known to be nature's Viagra. It's a powerful tea and worth checking out too. I feel like things have been so busy this spring as new energy has come pouring in but I'm trying to pace myself and not take on too much. I have a tendency to dive right in and get excited by opportunities and seeing my vision take shape, but I feel like these days need to be appreciated and not just through the doing, but also through the simple act of just sitting and observing the new life that's emerging all around me. There's a reason why there is that saying, Stop and smell the roses. When we get too caught up in our day-to-day responsibilities and activities, the constant doing, we forget to slow down and simply watch the clouds pass through the sky or the trees as they sway in the wind or listen to the birds call out to one another. We forget the explosive beauty of a flower after it first blooms or the bright green colors as the trees and bushes start to fill out and make new shapes. Whatever you do with your day, don't forget to enjoy the simple things in life happening all around you. The things in nature that remind us of how amazing this planet truly is. <laughs> 